He-Man and Skeletor saved at Money Supermarket. Today we're looking at 10 sneaky ways Costco gets you to spend more money. While yes, Costco has impressive deals, they also have some pretty impressive ways to get you to part with your hard-earned cash. Hey, it's me. Knock knock. So, uh, you got, uh, you got my money? Some bulk is bull. This is incredible! It's no secret that when at Costco, their slogan is buy big. Actually, when you go to Costco, you can't do anything but buy everything big. Everything is designed to save you as much money as possible while getting the best bang for your buck. And even though the majority of the deals at Costco are really good, for some products, you could probably find better ones elsewhere. Buying in bulk is a big part of the Costco experience, from jumbo packs of toilet paper to enormous jars of mayonnaise. But a little research beforehand might help you save some money on items that are simply not worth buying in gigantic quantities. For example, buying produce in bulk, a big no-no. No, God! No, God, please, no! Unless, of course, you're a big family or you're buying for an office lunch, but otherwise, steer clear. No one can eat that many fruits or vegetables before they go bad. You'll just end up wasting money and food. Basically, anything fresh and with a close expiration date should be avoided, if not for very special occasions. Instead, pick up things that will last you for a longer time, like frozen meat, oil, or even spices. Ladies, I'm telling you, they are very spicy. Just a little sliver goes a long way. The choice is not yours. We don't have a choice! Okay? In this giant warehouse, you can find pretty much anything you're looking for, from food to electronics and even eye exams. While there's a huge variety of products, there isn't that much variety when it comes to more specific products. In other words, you will find big bottles of ketchup, but you probably won't find as many brands as you would in a regular grocery store. They keep maybe two to three different options of the same type of product instead of stocking up on a bunch. And of course, Costco will most likely put its own brand before everything else. Another psychological tactic to trick you into spending more money at its finest. Let me get the big one. Nope. This one. Nope. This one. No. Let me get them all. Studies have shown that if you offer people 20 different types of jam, you're not going to sell as many than if you offer them only five. So by offering items in bulk with only one or two varieties, Costco increases its chance of making the sale. Right, Jack. The membership. Look, listen, and learn. Being a part of something is always special, and feeling like you belong and matter to a company is even better. That's exactly what Costco capitalizes on. By paying a membership fee, you can't help but feel a little like a VIP. Not only does that get you in the door, but it also keeps you coming back. After all, how wasteful would it be to pay for a membership if you're not going to show up to use it, right? <laughs> That was unexpected. Basically, if you pay the money for a membership, you're going to want to get your money's worth and keep going back to the store. People have to justify the money they already spent on the card. It also comes from the fact that even if you don't use your Costco membership card on a regular basis, the store still collects a lot of money from you. In 2015, Costco customers paid over $2 billion in membership fees alone. So if you paid for that membership card, you might as well use use it as much as you can. And even though people sometimes hesitate to buy a membership at first, about 90% of customers renew their membership every year. But if you don't plan on going very often, maybe think twice about applying for a card and just tag along with a friend for now. Thank you very much. Please come again. We have a lot more groceries. Weird price codes. Oh my god, are these pickles really only 39 cents? Have you ever noticed all of the random symbols on those big Costco price tags? Do you have any idea what they mean? Probably not. However, that gibberish could end up helping you save a lot of money. Or the complete opposite. For instance, an asterisk on a price tag means Costco will not be restocking that item, meaning you need to stock up on it now. Another trick? Pricing stuff at 99 cents versus a dollar. Yes, it's the oldest trick in the book, but your brain will focus more on the item priced at $2.99 rather than $3. That will be $22.50. 
2250? Because of the left digit effect, our brain sees 999 as a much better deal than $10, even though ultimately they're the same price. Prices ending with 49, 79, or 89 cents mean that Costco got a deal with the supplier and it's being passed on to the consumer. The moral of the story, learn your price code symbols and be ready next time you go to Costco. Before making any decision in your life, no matter how small, call your wife. Fancy versus warehouse. I don't have any money. Why don't you tell me that? You didn't ask. When going shopping, whether it's for groceries or for fun, it's all about how you feel when you walk into the store. If you are stressed or out of your comfort zone, you'll most likely get what you need and get out. But if you feel relaxed and comfortable, hello shopping spree. Sometimes you'll walk into a store and it just looks so painfully fancy and over-the-top expensive, your wallet will cry a little. At Costco, you probably have a completely different experience. With cement floors, fluorescent lighting hanging from exposed beams and products stacked on pallets, fancy is not exactly the word you would use to describe a Costco experience. You are not going to believe this. By not trying to look expensive or fancy, it makes the customers feel the same way about the merchandise, making them buy more and more. Basically, if customers feel at ease and not pressured by the expensive decor, the more likely they are to fill their carts, feeling like they're getting great deals. Hey, everyone. Be safe out there. Go! The food court is a must. Okay, I think the food court is right around the corner. Everybody knows that a trip to Costco is not complete without stopping by the food court to get one of those delicious giant hot dogs. Well, at least that's what Costco wants you to think. With a combo being so cheap, a price that hasn't changed since 1985, it's pretty hard to resist. Costco is known for its hot dogs, cheesy pizza, and big ice cream cones. They also know darn well just how much customers love these treats, which is why you will usually see the food court placed right up at the front of the store, or right before checkout. I can't believe the old food court switcheroo worked! And in turn, it also keeps people in the store longer than they may have planned, potentially leading them to spend more money. And even if you had already planned to visit the food court after your grocery Run, just think about this. You're sitting there, you've already checked out, devouring your juicy hot dog, looking at people passing by. How many things do you think you're going to see in other people's carts that you simply must have but forgot to buy? The answer is probably enough to make you go back in for a second round of shopping. $78 on lavender honey. I felt sorry for the shop assistant. Show us some love and hit that like button. Unlike a Costco membership, it's free. Now let's keep going. Free samples aren't actually free. Sir, is there a problem? I'm just making sure no one ever has to eat this. Just like the food court is a rite of passage at Costco, so is the array of free samples available at the end of almost every aisle. So imagine doing your grocery shopping on an empty stomach. Let's just say that piece of cheese you just sampled might end up in your cart against your will if your stomach is calling the shots. Apparently, giving free food to people and giving them a taste can really boost sales. Who would have thought? And free pizza samples? That's even crazier. This tactic increases pizza sales by 600%. It would be safe to say that people have a soft spot for pizza, especially when it's free. Ooh, what are these? They're Jonah's Pizza Nosh, made with three cheeses. When someone hands you a delicious piece of piping hot pizza, you might feel a surprising urge to reciprocate and do something for them, aka buy the whole thing. Free samples not only increase sales and your guilt, but also make for more loyal customers who will most likely come back to try other free goodies. Sir, you don't have to keep moving to the back of the line. You can have as many as you want. They're free. A real treasure hunt. This is the treasure, Bri. Speaking of a strategic layout designed to make you spend more money, Costco is all about making you look, search, and look again until you finally find what you need. While the aisles continue the same pattern of having the most expensive items in the middle, that doesn't stop those items from moving. Sometimes Costco likes to play hide and seek with the customers. They purposely move products around the store to different locations, hoping that you will look for them. It creates a kind of treasure hunt experience in which you need 
need to walk around to find what you need. Plus, most of the aisles don't even have signs. How are you supposed to find that jumbo jar of peanut butter that gets moved every week? They also constantly rotate a certain percentage of their inventory, replacing products to create a sense of urgency and uncertainty. Sure, it helps you discover new products that you might not have thought of buying, but it also makes your bill go up and their pockets fuller. I've never seen those before in my life. Bazooka? I have a permit. It's all about the layout. Oh my god. What? This is why you are always so happy to run to the grocery store. Have you ever ran into the grocery store for what was supposed to be only a couple of things and ended up leaving with way more stuff than you planned? Yeah, that's not an uncommon occurrence, and it's mostly due to just how the store has laid things out. While it's true for almost every grocery store, it's especially true at Costco. Everything at Costco is strategically placed, and you have no choice but to walk by all the money-grabbing booby traps. The store layout is made to encourage impulsive buying, kind of like how other stores have candy bars and magazines near the checkout line. But at Costco, they take things even further. They put all of the costly things in the center of the store, making it impossible to avoid the inevitable. According to a survey done in 2018, the average American spends around $5,400 per year on impulse buys. Costco knows this very well and takes advantage of it. This is why you might sometimes find items next to each other that don't at all seem like they belong together. This floor plan concept is called the racetrack design, made for customers to walk past as many products as possible, leading them to impulse buys. And soon enough, your tiny list of toilet paper, soda, and bread turns into a $100 bill and a quick run to the food court. There you go, sir. <laughs> you forgot to charge me. Oh, no, sir, it's free. Return policy. Generous or mind control? Uh, I'd like to return these. Oh, of course. Do you have your receipt? One of Costco's best features, other than all of the samples and cheap deals, is its super lenient and generous return policy. You can essentially return anything you're not satisfied with. Literally anything. Those croissants you just bought at the bakery weren't soft and fluffy enough? Just bring them back. This is all your fault. What? How is this my fault? However, this risk-free 100% satisfaction guarantee return policy doesn't just come from the kindness of their hearts or to show customers how much they care. It turns out it's only another smart marketing tool, a way to make you spend more. By offering such an open and transparent return policy, it removes the self-doubt of thinking you might be stuck with something you don't like. If you don't like something after a month, you just have to bring it back. No biggie. Either it's out of laziness or a change of heart, but 91% of consumers say that a store's return policy is an important factor in their buying decision. I can't sell you that box. It's damaged. I don't see any damage. First time here? Then leave us a comment and hit that subscribe button. And for another great video, just tap or click.